What's up dudes, I'm Jay. This video is gonna be the render breakdown for Frankenstein. I asked you guys if you wanted to see a more rendery, a, a longer video of the... I asked you guys if you wanted to see me putting together the render setup, render and paint over in Photoshop, and you guys responded. Thank you for that. Well, here it is by popular demand. Even though it might look a little bit boring, I guess, uh, there's a lot more tweaking, a lot more waiting around, a lot more naming files, but to be honest with you, it's one of my favorite parts. And it's also really important to showcase work that you do in a way that elevates the thing and makes it much more enjoyable for a viewer to look at rather than just a gray render or a screenshot from ZBrush. If you put extra time in it, you can make it really exciting looking and a lot more cinematic. So I hope you liked the video. If you do, click the like button. If you like this sort of thing, subscribe, and here we go, bye. All right, so picking up where we left off in the last video. Um, I'm gonna start laying down this base color now. First is gonna come the poly painting. So um, I kind of work deep colors and then build up the skin kind of feeling. So I'm choosing my base color here as a dark purple instead of a dark red, thinking you know he's dead. So I'm gonna try to use more blues and purples, more cold, less warmth kind of deal. Uh, and then so switching to an alpha with a spatter and a low opacity, I'm painting up layers. And you see here me using purple for the blood veins instead of, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm picking colors that to me feel like more zombie um, than the, the typical um, colors. There I'm choosing a color and highlighting some bone, like it's beneath the skin. And... Um, here I'm using the uh, mask by cavity to try to enunciate the pores and little wrinkles that I have, similar to how you would paint um, traditionally like a, a sculpt, a resin cast or a silicone mask um, with washes. Um, traditionally you'd put like that color you want to get in the cracks, very liquidy mixed with water or something. So it gets in the cracks and then wipe away so that you get that color in the crevices. And essentially it's kind of what I'm faking here by doing a cavity mask and filling it with that kind of color and then even doing another cavity mask maybe blur it so that it kind of fades a little bit out and then I pinked up the corners of the lids and the the wounds and stuff to make it feel more a little bit more creepy and fleshy I guess also enunciates those edges here I'm just messing with the I was just messing with the bust right there um, for the composition I, I wanted to, I didn't want to see you know, any negative space. I wasn't sure yet how I was going to crop it though. So I just touched up the teeth and gums here a little bit more uh, for the render. And then there's this gap in the back of the hair uh, that I could see from my angle. So I'm making a new clump back there to fill it out. Uh, I also have to add eyebrows, I notice. So kind of get some bonus material with eyebrow addition. Here we go. I felt like it'd be too weird if he had hair on his head and not eyebrows. Uh, I didn't do eyelashes. Uh, weird choices to make, but I had to contemplate it for a bit. And I was like, yeah, he needs some eyebrows though, or else it would feel like a total bald thing with a wig. So I thought the eyebrows would help. Uh, so now I'm, I set up the key, uh, key brush, the key shot bridge. Um, when I start to assemble my little lighting setup, I'm going to have to switch back and forth a lot. Once the connection is made, it's pretty easy too. So here I'm starting with my first light. It's going to be a, an area light uh, and I'm using a card kind of like emulate this bounce light and this will be my my rim. So the first idea to touch on here is I'm not just using an HDRI image and that's it. I'm using one of the images that comes with it too. I think it's a dark garage, but it's very, very dark. Um, I'm, I lower the brightness on the HDRI environment probe just be, just to fill in the dark shadows because I'm going to light this with objects, uh, and then assign the light materials in Keyshot. Uh, this way it looks much more cinematic, uh, and I can control it more. I know that I want a noir monster feel. I'm not exactly sure, you know, at this point what I'm going to do, but I know, you know, that means hiding a lot of stuff in the shadows, stark contrast that harshness. And I also know what, uh, at this stage that I want two pre-saturated colors. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a blue and an orange 
uh, my thinking was the key light above him would be like a chandelier. Um, and then the rim would be like from the moon outside of a window. Anyways, that's what's going on in my head. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to here. I'm just experimenting with the colors uh, and the lumen values of the lights and the position. And I'm going to keep tweaking this obviously back and forth. So I'm happy with it. Um, so this is, you know, experimentation. I don't have a, I don't even have a reference. I just know generally what I want. Uh, and the goal here is right now I'm setting up what you would kind of call a beauty shot. I mean, the one with the most information in it um, that I'll then do work in Photoshop, but the end goal will be to render out passes uh, in different setups so that I have more control in Photoshop to make my final image. And when you're doing um, renders like this, it's important to lower the quality, but enough like so that you can see whatever's important to you, the color of the lights, um, any kind of weird shadows or clipping or, you know, like what's going on, but to cut down on time. The final render for the beauty of this was like so long because I used um, the skin shader with translucency, you know, in ZBrush and with all these lights and the size that I rendered it at, it took like eight or 10 hours. So I had to do it overnight. So um, when you're doing these tests, make sure to lower that so you can just do more iteration quickly. I'm just touching up and making the eyebrows more asymmetrical, a little bit more chaotic because I noticed in the render it looks too orderly. And you see how you can just go back and forth like that. Once the connection is made, it's awesome because um, if you notice something at any point, you can just move a little hair here, add a little thing here. So it's pretty cool. So now I'm starting the skin shader. Uh, I transferred the poly paint that I made in ZBrush as a texture, like a TIFF texture, and imported it. So you can see the, the painting that I did in ZBrush now brought over. And experimenting with the colors. Uh, in retrospect, I actually think I would have reversed the lights because the key light is warm and in my mind i was thinking fire what it did was bring warmth to the skin and made him feel more alive you know less gray and dead so i would have made the key light actually blue like moon like he was outside and maybe the rim light is like fire uh color but anyways next time so at the end of it is when i had that i that bright idea but i still am happy with how it came out um so here's an example of a pass I was talking about. This is like this black oil kind of pass so that I get the reflections and specularity that I can put on in Photoshop as a screen layer. Um, this is the same deal, but less shiny so that I have all these options uh, in Photoshop to mix and match how I want. A lot faster, a lot more iterative in Photoshop to get more specific. So if you just render out these kind of informational passes, this I mean inclusion, then in Photoshop, you can combine them to do kind of whatever you want, which is the best. So you're never trying to nail down everything in one render, you know? Um, here's one where I'm experimenting with what I just spoke about. I reversed the colors to see. And and I didn't get um, something that I thought was good. So it actually made me even more happy that I didn't have to do another eight, 10 hour render. So here what I did was um, to get a mask, a, a nice clean mask, I made everything black, the material, the background. I took out reflections and specularity. And then I increased the sampling rate, like anti-aliasing in the render settings. Uh, very high to get a high sample so that I could just get a, and, I, and then I rendered it out with transparency, like as a PNG, just so I can get a clean edge. Uh, I still had to do some edge cleanup. And, and you don't have to use this, you don't have to do that to mask out the light, for instance. You could just uncheck that for being renderable. But, um, I use that mask so that I could freely paint the background and stuff. Those hairs, the light on the hairs, because the background's dark and the hair's dark, the light on the hair is kind of creating some buzziness that I'll I'll have to fix a little bit in Photoshop. This is me painting out some stuff now. I added a a dirt layer, just a grungy big image that you can just get offline that I use in some of these. So uh, I put it in a multiply layer, and then I can just paint out wherever I don't want the dirt. Cool things like where wrinkles are, you know, it kind of makes it more realistic looking like he squinted or something. And also you're going to paint dirt out of the hair and other places where you don't want it to be distracting. And since the teeth are kind of, you know, kind of a focal point, uh, I, I wanted to put some variation, some texture. And um, instead of trying to do that all in ZBrush like before, I just start doing it in Photoshop. So painting a little color variation. Uh, same thing with the eyes. Uh, the eyes 
I wanted to look, I guess, kind of blind. I'm not sure how to explain it. Like, I didn't want it to look alive. So I thought about it for a bit, and um, I'm kind of queuing off some inspiration of these portraits that I'd seen before of people that were born blind. And so their their iris, they didn't have an iris or a pupil that dipped in like like normal. It was kind of this cloudy, uh, pretty bluish, whitish uh, thing. So that's kind of what I'm trying to emulate here so that you can see he has eyes, but something not right about it. A little more spooky and a little more dead guy feeling, hopefully. I turn the layers on and off as I'm painting just so I can see. And there's going to be little things here. I'm touching the hair, those little bright spots I was mentioning earlier, and also adding more shadow because you can kind of see through the hair, probably because there weren't, weren't enough hairs. Little cracks in teeth so that it feels more maybe rotten, just dead. Um, they kind of look like wood teeth, but hopefully they just feel a little bit more creepy, a little bit more dead um, and old. That'd be good. All right, so let's run run through a quick breakdown here of the PSD, the final PSD, and we'll work our way up to what became the final image. Uh, here we go. So if I turn the background on here, we'll see there's just three layers in here. It starts with a solid color. I laid down some generic kind of texture uh, to give it a little bit more life, make it a little bit more interesting back there. And then with a soft kind of brush, I kind of backlit him. This helps pop him off the background. And it even ties in the rim light and the hair a little bit. Overall, it just makes a nice halo effect around where I want people to be looking. And then in here in the Frank folder, we start with this beauty shot. This is it just raw right out of key shot. And then we'll start turning on our passes. Here's the spec. Pretty subtle here. You can see from the mask, a lot of it's painted out. But, you know, in the eye, I left the shininess here. But you get a kind of little bit of a wetness and oily feeling with this. Uh, the occlusion, always super important to ground things together. Um, this way you can see the head pops away from the neck and things just overall look like they settle in a lot better here with the occlusion. And you can always tweak levels with this too if you wanted to, you know, different effect. You could make the shadows much more minimal here. But anyways, I left it here and we, we're still building on top. So this one, this layer does a lot. Um, I'm using, I call this the light layer, but it's essentially that black oily kind of pass, as you can see. And then so I put that on the screen and uh, I painted out areas I didn't want it to be, either distracting places or places that didn't make sense. But here you definitely are now getting a sense of light being on this character, right? It, it reflecting it back. Here's some the paint over of the teeth, which is just some painting. Same thing with the eyes here. And now here comes overlays. You see a big difference here. This gives it so much more texture now so that it's a lot more interesting, a lot less barren over here. And that's really just this dirt layer here. Boop. And you see like I mentioned, painting out of the wrinkles and areas where there wouldn't be dirt uh, right here on the neck. You can see this is kind of interesting. I mean, I think this stuff's cool where I painted out of the wrinkles of the neck. I don't know, I geek out about that kind of stuff. Uh, same thing up here. Uh, I'm kind of faking like little cuts or smudges and where the where he's you know where he's wrinkling and I get it away. I don't want it to be distracting from where the wounds are and generally in the middle too I'm kind of getting rid of it. Whereas on the side I let it stay like as if the light's coming and it's casting a shadow, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, not a lot over his legs there, just dirt, you know, because it's from the ground and he's Frankenstein. Dirt done. And then here comes adjustments. A lot's happening in here. We'll turn off all this. So the first thing here is this little tweak. Um, uh, I'm missing a couple layers here because I flattened it because I blurred it. I did a lens blur to draw focus in here so it's clear in the middle and then it blurs a little bit out. And by flattening it, I get to lose all that stuff that I painted before, which is good. I want this to be not as crispy. You can see here it goes from detailed to blurred out. Um, and then I also even fixed this little part on the forehead here. I thought it looked kind of even. Uh, it was bugging me a little bit, so just moved it a bit. And added the, there's some darkening in here of the hair that it was too bright. Uh, you can see the skull through there. Uh, essentially the reflection, the light coming in on that pass was still here, so I was getting rid of that. Here's a little tweak for a little hue saturation for the redness 
or I wanted I was losing it. It was getting washed out with the other things. You see it's kind of gray and purpley here. This brings the redness back in. Uh, here's a big difference. Um, here is a couple layers flattened together. Um, kind of a, a general like variation in color. Um, so that it's not so flat. Uh, also, I finished painting the eye, I think, in this. So it's just a darker... Uh, I put a little rim around it to pop the eyeball out and then a fake reflection in there. Here's me trying out uh, Frankenstein green. But that was, that was a fail. But I wanted to see what it looked like. This looks like the Hulk who has been on an island deserted for like two years. He lives off coconuts. Uh, here's this vignette. Uh, ob you know, obvious stuff where I'm just fading out the bottom that you shouldn't care about. Um... And then here's the vignette around the side. This is just a darkness layer, a brightness layer, so I can uh, make it as dark as I want. And then um, I painted out the area I want people to look. And that's what the vignette, that's what the blur is doing. It, it, it not only ties it in with it looking cinematic, but it also draws your attention uh, to where I want the viewer to look. But the reason why it looks cinematic is that's what people are, that's what photographers are doing in cinematography. They are focusing on what they want you to look at. Here's a little final tweak layer with some color dodging, some brightening up of the, I uh, brightened up the left side here, uh, added a couple more stray hair strands, as you can see, and brought a little bit more blue into the side. And there you go, there's our final image. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks guys. Peace.